Good evening. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone and appreciate you taking the time to come be with us. And I'm sure you'll find a blessing in these lessons as well as we have. And keep Brother Paul in your prayers as he'll be a traveling home in the morning and he gets to stay home one day before he gets on a plane and goes to Michigan. So good luck, Michigan's all I need. <laughs> he only got to be there two days. So. We'll keep him in your prayers as he travels as well as his family. He says after he gets back from Michigan, he's he going to have a small vacation. He gets to work at home. So that would be a blessing to the family, I'm sure. So keep him in your prayers. This has been a blessing in ways it, 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 I couldn't have ever guessed. Just the way you go about doing things, it, it, it's amazing to me. And I appreciate every blessing I've heard. And thank you so much. Uh, in the way of some prayer requests, please remember Sandy Stevens as she continues to struggle with her health as well as... Uh, Karen, Sandy McMillan's daughter, as well as her sister out in, I think it's Las Vegas, isn't it, Jackie? So she's just having some radiation and chemo treatment, so remember her as well, as well as Sandy, as she's not in the best of health either. So if you would, uh, we will open now with prayer. Who's got, who got open? Again, Father, we're sorry for the sacrifice of Jesus and so thankful for your work. Father, we're just so thankful that Paul was with us. Earlier tonight we could nourish our bodies with the excellent food. And now, Father, we look forward to the privilege of singing and studying. And we pray with all of our being that this week will help all of us to go to heaven. Again, thank you so much for what you've done for us. Thank you for the Sanford congregation. And especially, we want to thank you again for Jesus. His wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> If you would, mark 880, 880. That will be our song after the lesson, 880. 880. Before the lesson, uh, I have two songs picked out. Let's sing uh, number 19, number 19. <clears throat> Number 19. Hold oh.
791. We'll sing uh, two verses of 791. <clears throat> First and last. What a cause of divine in the city so bright, the gloomy wrath in the heavens there tall. Our ransom will raise happy songs in his praise, with all of God's singers in all. With all of God's singers in all.
Let us sing, sing, sing melodies to Him. Let us sing of His love, 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 as He reigns. So won't you join me, my brethren, to our journey's end. Singing hymns full of praise, let us teach our voices raise. Please pray that my work will bear fruit. I did have a baptism last week at um is it all? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was all.
Sorry. Sorry about that. Wow. All right. Sorry about that. It's a good thing I'm a loud mouth, right? I did have a conversion to Christ last week, and that was a huge blessing, huge blessing. We have a new sister named Emily, so we can all rejoice at that. She heard a message that cut her to the heart, and she did what all penitent believers did in the book of Acts. She obeyed the gospel. Now she's a Christian, and it was very encouraging, very encouraging. Unlocked by faith. We're going to take apart the lyrics. You know the routine now. We're going to take apart the lyrics by the authority of Scripture to make sure that what we are singing, what we are teaching, is the doctrine of Christ. Because when we are singing, we are teaching, Colossians 3.16, and whatever we teach, whatever we sing, whatever we teach, whatever we do religiously must be by the authority of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, that's Colossians 3.17. I don't always say this, but all these hymns that we have that we, we've been singing, we have to be careful. Singing error is a sin, and we're all ready to accept that. I'm sure. But singing mindlessly, that's in vain too. So just be careful when you sing hymns that you think about what you're doing because you are teaching everyone around you that can hear your voice. You are teaching them. Be careful. Be careful with the hymns. Um, I don't like the vague fluff that is passed off for hymns today. And equally, you know, some of the old hymns, we can be so convinced that they are good because the music is good. And it is. The music is often really good, and it's old, so it hits our nostalgia button. But some of it's just vague, too, and some of it straight up teaches Calvinism. So just be careful when you sing. And, and if, if you have a question, if you look at a hymn and you're like, I don't know, ask each other. You know, Dig, it, dig into the lyrics. Look for the scriptures that might support it. Figure out what it's teaching, but, but don't do it mindlessly. Don't brush it under the rug if you have a question. Study it with each other. That's what the Lord's Church does. Ask questions. So Unlocked by Faith is the hymn of the evening. I, write, I try to write them where you cannot miss, as opposed to the ones that are, I wonder what he's teaching there. You really just cannot miss that. Like last night's message, then you'll be a Christian too. Hear the word, believe it's true, repent of your sins, and confess his name before men. That's not all that's required of you. Go down in the water in Jesus' name, then you'll be a Christian too. I wonder who wrote that. Oh, a Christian. I wonder if that was somebody in a uh, man-made denomination. No way. No, denominations don't teach that, do they? That's the doctrine of Christ. That's what I try to write into all these hymns. I want to make it crystal clear. I don't want to make it to where he, I wonder, is he poetic license? Is he? No, no. He's teaching, for instance, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. Well, those are the words of Jesus. Yes, I wrote that one into a teaching hymn as well. What does that mean? It means he that believes and is baptized will be saved. Try to make them crystal clear, and I want them to be a blessing to you. Unlocked by faith. We're going to take apart the lyrics by the authority of Scripture to make sure we're singing truth. We're going to be more noble like those Berean Jews. Acts 17, 11, and examine everything I'm teaching you. Don't take my word for it. I do not want you to believe me. I also don't want you to believe anybody who teaches you anything spiritually. I want you to test them. Try the spirits because there's many false prophets gone out. All right, we're going to sing it first, and then we'll take it apart. Unlocked by faith. Oh, yeah, got to teach you something musically. Very fun parts in this. Um, I got to tell you, Martin, the Hatler Chapel Church of Christ in Martin, they actually asked me to, to lead this one. One of the elders did. He heard the song. He's like, you got to teach that one. That's the one. And I said, I don't have it transcribed yet. He said, do it anyway. I said, okay. Put it up on the screen. No music, no transcribed music, just the lyrics. And they nailed it. It sounded like they knew it. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. And it went great, so... You have a leg up on them. I expect great things from you. You've been doing great all week. I know you'll kill it. Kill it. Did preachers say that? I don't know. All right, musically. One special thing. It's called a slur. Uh-oh. You got triple A's? You got two triple A's coming? What? Thank you. All right. Israel told by God they've been given the city of Jericho. Here it is. It's called a slur, I guess. I'm going to sing it the way it goes. 
Cause they circled round the city six days, one time, seventh day, seven times. So it's two slurs and then a thing that's almost like it, but not quite that severe. Six, it bends that note pretty big. Six days, one time, seventh day, seven times. All right, this song has a format of verse, 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 chorus. Okay? This does not repeat the chorus just one time at the very end. All right, that's it. That's all I'm teaching, and we're going to do it. Here we go. Israel told my God that they had been given city of Jericho, the city of Jericho. It was the grace of God that they unlocked by faith, cause they circled around the sea six days, one time, seven days, seven times, through the trumpet shout aloud, then the Faith that saves, it must obey. That's the overall teaching of this hymn. I bet y'all recognize those accounts of biblical faith in the verses. Now we're going to take them apart. Consider these accounts of biblical faith. Taking it from the top, Israel. Israel's on deck first for verse 1. Israel told by God that they had been given, given, the city of Jericho, the city of Jericho. It was the grace of God that they unlocked by faith. What did their faith look like? Because they circled around the city six days, one time, seventh day, seven times, blew the trumpets, shouted aloud, then the walls came tumbling down. Taking you back to that word right at the beginning, they had been given the city of Jericho. I gave it to you. Let's read that account. That is a potent account of biblical faith. We're going to be considering Joshua chapter 6 verses 2 through 5 first. So we wrote Joshua chapter 6, verses 2 through 5, into the first verse of this teaching hymn. These folks are going to unlock God's grace through their obedient faith. He's going to give them the city when they have enough faith to do exactly what they were told. 
Joshua chapter 6, verses 2 through 5. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king, and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Huh. Gave it to him. They probably earned it, didn't they? They did not earn it. When they did exactly what they were told, God gave it to them, and that is grace. What they did, obey, do exactly what they were told, is their faith. That's what their faith looked like. I wonder if on that first day they had, uh, instead of you know marching around at one time, I wonder if they'd like try to speed up the process. Let's go ahead and do it two times a day. I wonder if they got to that third day when they had marked around six times. I wonder if it had fallen on that. Oh, no, it wouldn't have worked, would it? What if they had just gone ahead and done it six times? Oh, we want to just do, yeah, we're going to yeah, we're gonna do it six times, and then we'll go ahead and do it seven times in a row right after that. Then we'll shout and blow the, the trumpets made from ram's horns. Well, you go ahead and make the one out of brass. I wonder if it had worked. Nope. No, you, you do what you're told. That's how God knows you have faith. And then grace is accessed. You've unlocked by faith God's grace. That's what their faith looked like. I bet y'all have heard this sermon before. I bet you have. Biblical accounts of faith. Israel told by God that they had been given the city of Jericho. The city of Jericho. It was the grace of God that they unlocked by faith because they circled around the city six days, one time. One time a day for six days in a row. Seventh day, seven times. Blew the trumpets, shouted aloud, then the walls came tumbling down. That's what their faith looked like. It's belief coupled with and evidenced by obedience. It's not veering from the pattern and saying we're going to do it three times on this day and then three times the next day. That'll be good enough. I know it's a little different from what he said. No, it just wouldn't work. If they had veered from the pattern, the pattern, it wouldn't have gotten the results of the walls of Jericho falling. They had enough faith to obey. They had enough belief to obey, which is faith. Syrian told by God, this is a fun account to preach. I've got a message called um, Better Waters. People that want it their way. I'm not going to preach that whole sermon right in here. This one is a standalone sermon by itself with Naaman from Kings, 2 Kings, I think it is. Yep, 2 Kings 5, 1 through 14. We're going to read it. 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Assyria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman, my servant, to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened when the king of Israel read this letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. 
Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious. I like the, the KJV there because it says wroth. That word just sounds angry, doesn't it? He was wroth. I like that word. It is potent and it's descriptive and gets the point across better. Continuing in the New King. Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of his, the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, Wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. You ever had anybody get angry at you for telling them the one way of salvation that Jesus offers? They're angry because they didn't know, and they turned that anger and directed it at you. Boy, that hurts, doesn't it? I'm just telling you what Jesus said. They get angry. They may get angry because they realize that they're lost, or they realize that grandma died lost. That one hurts. And they take that negative feeling, and instead of turning that negative energy into Bible study and seeing what God actually says in the Bible, they get angry at the one who told them what God actually said. Boy, that's frustrating. I like what Naaman said. Well, first, I don't like what he said when he said, aren't these rivers better? The far par and the... I forgot the name of it. Abana and the far par. Those rivers, they're better. Those are the better waters of that sermon I mentioned People want better waters all the time, don't they? They want the better waters of invite Jesus into your heart and accept Jesus as your personal Savior, and I want to be saved like faith alone, and I don't need the church. I just want Jesus. They want those kind of better waters. You know what I mean. Those waters are not better. In, in Naaman's case, they weren't better because they would not accomplish what God offered to him, the solution to his leprosy problem. He was angry. His servant talked some sense into him. If he had asked you to do something great, some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? I mention this sometimes. If he had asked you to climb the mountain seven times over the course of the next three years, if he had asked you to chop off your pinky, wouldn't you have done it? That would be like some great thing. W wouldn't you have done it? W what do you think? Well, in the case of leprosy, chopping off your pinky sounds pretty minor compared to your pinky dissolving away along with all the rest of your appendages. Yeah, he would do it. He would have. If he had asked you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? He talked some sense into him, named and got a clue, and he actually repented. He changed his mind about what he was feeling, about that anger, the wrath, his anger that he was feeling towards the man of God telling him, here's a simple solution. You got leprosy. That's a bad deal, man. That is no good. You're going to suffer for the rest of your life. You won't be around your family. It's going to be awful. Here's a simple solution. I like that his servant was able to talk some sins into him. You know what he did? Exactly what he was told. He actually had enough faith to go to the Jordan, not the far par, not the Abana, not the better waters that he wanted. He went to the Jordan because God said so via his prophet. You know what happened? His skin, it's like a baby's butt. It's all perfect. It's like a little child. Yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> Imagine that doing what God said, and you get the result that God offers? Ha! You know what that is? That's faith. That's biblical faith. So a second account of biblical faith. Syrian told by God, man of God, Elisha. The cleansing of leprosy, the cleansing of leprosy. It was the grace of God, the healing of the leprosy. It was the grace of God that he unlocked by faith. He went to the Jordan to dip seven times. Because Elisha said to go, by the authority of God he said that, Go and dip in Jordan seven times on that day. He was wroth. He wouldn't accept. Then old Naaman came to himself. He wanted to 
wave his hand over the ear. I thought you'd just say some words and wave your hand. He wanted some mojo. He wanted that touchy-feely nonsense like the people today. Holy Spirit came over me. They roll around on the floor and act like they got some touchy-feely nonsense going on. That's what it is. It's nonsense. It's not by the authority of Scripture. That's why it's nonsense. I mean, it looks silly to us, and, and that's nonsense. But the real reason it's nonsense is because it's a spiritual dead end. It's a fable, 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 4. We're going to have to love these people out here enough to show them what the Bible actually says. All of us. That is our job. We are ministers. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Servants. of God Almighty. Of Jesus the Christ. Israel told by God, Moses relayed his law. The healing of fiery bites. Boy, I love that lyric. We got there. We wrangled with that That. Part of that verse was just fighting with us. We couldn't get the syllable count right. You actually have to get the syllable count consistent for a couple of reasons. When these songs are are written out onto a PowerPoint, it's easy. You know, it could change with each, this slide, this part of each verse. It could change. But when you have it printed onto one sheet in a PDF like we have in our hymnals, it needs to be the same. So there's two reasons it needs to be the same. One is that it can all fit on one sheet on a PDF. But the other reason is it's one less thing for you to learn, for the hearers, the singers, to learn. It needs to be consistent so you know, oh, this is the way we sing it each time when the verse comes around. That's why we do it. So it's challenging to do what we do. Uh, It's frustrating, and then you have a, um, a victory each time you get to a part where it's, I can't get this verse. This is giving us a hard time. And when you're doing it with another Christian, it's really enjoyable. You're both just like, your brows are furred, you're fighting it, you're working it, you get, and then he said, the healing of fiery bites. I was like, that's it. Because that's what it is. Let's read the account and make sure that's it. Shane came up with this. So Shane Fisher is one of the collaborators for Christ. This is his message. Uh, we, we wrote it together, but it's mostly his. Shane is such a blessing to me. So where are we turning for this one? This one is in Numbers 21. Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. Book of Numbers. Chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. Then they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. That one always just blows my mind, speaking against God. Amazing what people will do. People spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of, the, out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. Whew, talk about ingratitude. Amazing. That's what they were. God's about to stick it to them for doing that too. Watch him. Verse 6. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. That's what you get. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that He takes away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten when he looks at it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Does that make any kind of sense to you? Is it logical at all to look at a piece of metal that somebody shaped into a snake and all of a sudden a venom problem inside your body is solved? Does it make any kind of sense? No? No. It it doesn't make any kind of sense to me. Now, it makes sense because God said it, And some of those people had enough faith to get up out of the tent. Oh, what does their faith look like? They believed, they well, no, they probably just sat in the tent and said, oh yeah, I believe that if I would get up and go look at that serpent, it will solve the venom problem in my body. And at that point, because they believed, they didn't have a venom problem anymore. They did not die from that serpent. That's not what happened. That is not what happened. That is not biblical faith. If they believed enough to get up, and walk somewhere and find the brazen serpent, guess what happened? When they looked at it, they didn't have a problem anymore with venom in their body. And that is biblical faith. 
Not that easy believism that people like to pass off today. Not the easy believism that they could have practiced back then because they'd have died in that tent from that fiery serpent bite. Fiery bites. We got there to that lyric and I was like, you got it, Shane. Shane is a blessing to me. And I want to tell you this. That man has the best prayers. When I am uh, stressed out about something and he says, do you want to pray about it? I just deflate. Yes. Please, Shane. Please lead us in a prayer. He's a blessing to me. I love Shane Fisher. Hard working servant. Israel told by God, Moses relayed his law, God's law. The healing of fiery bites. They needed the healing from the fiery bites, the bites from the fiery serpents. It was the grace of God that they unlocked by faith. They got up out of the tent. They went and found the brazen serpent and looked at it. That's what their faith looked like. They believed it enough to couple that belief with obedience, resulting in biblical faith, which unlocked God's grace, solving their venom problem. God said to make a serpent, make it from bronze, put it high on a pole, looking at it, and you will live. Doesn't make any kind of sense. Does it make any kind of sense that you can go down into water, any water, because God said so, and all of a sudden the blood of Jesus will be credited to your account? Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make physical sense. It's like, like mechanically as a person who understands some mechanical things, that doesn't make any kind of sense. But God said it works. God said it works. Those who trusted looked and they did. Some people, when we tell them the one way of salvation, oh, you, just, you don't trust Jesus. Jesus is the one who said he that believes and is baptized will be saved. The evidence that I trusted Jesus was when I believed and I was baptized. That's how you trust Jesus. That's biblical faith. That's belief coupled with and evidenced by obedience. Today, here we go, bringing it on home. Sinners are told by God from the Lord's final word, the Bible, that governs us. The New Testament that governs everyone today. The law of Christ. The words of Jesus Christ that will judge us. John 12, 48. Sinners are told by God from the Lord's final word. For anyone who will believe and any who is immersed. Looks like Mark 16, 16 to me. It is the grace of God that we unlock by faith. So we brought it home. First verse, Israel, they had enough faith to obey by marching around one time a day for six days, seventh day, seven times, blew the trumpet, shout aloud, the walls came tumbling down. That's their faith. Second verse, Naaman had enough faith to go to the specific Jordan and dip seven times. Do you think when he came up that second time, his skin was clear? How about the seventh time? Yeah. How about the sixth time? No. How about the seventh time? Yeah. What's that? Faith. Doing what he said, the way he said to do it, and that is biblical faith. Third verse, fiery bites, you've been bitten by a serpent, get up. Go find the brazen serpent. Look at it. Guess what happens? No more problem with that venom in your blood. Solved. Biblical faith. Sinners are told by God from the Lord's final word, for anyone who believe and any who is immersed, it is the grace of God that we unlock by faith because the Savior, He was given. Hey, if the Savior wasn't given, we wouldn't have this option. If he didn't come to this earth and live a perfectly sinless life and give himself willingly on the cross, if he wasn't raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we would have no reason to be here listening to me or singing these songs about Jesus Christ. We wouldn't have any reason to assemble in his name. Had he not come to the earth, we wouldn't have a reason. Had he not lived a perfect, sin, perfectly sinless life, making the right choice every time, we would have no reason to be here. Had he not been crucified on a Roman cross, in your stead, in my stead. We wouldn't have any reason to be here. Had God not raised him from the dead, we would have no reason to be here. It's the perfect blood of Jesus that makes it available to us to have enough faith to do what God said in order to benefit from that saving blood. The Savior who was given shed His own blood, united in His death. That's Romans 6. Anyone who calls on His name, ah, what's it not? We learned that. It's not any, anyone who says, Lord, Lord. Not every man that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. It is not verbal. Calling on the name of the Lord is not verbal. What is it? Romans 10.13 says, Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But, Romans 10.16, they haven't all obeyed the gospel. You've got to obey the gospel to call on His name. Appeal to His authority. Ask Him to save you in the one way He offers to save you. Anyone who calls on His name will receive the gift 
of His grace. Did I earn it when I repented and was baptized? Did I earn my salvation when I did that? It doesn't matter what He asked you to do. It doesn't matter what that is. Naaman did not earn perfectly clean skin like a child's skin when he went down into the water. No matter what he did, he couldn't have earned it. Those walls falling down without them touching them, Jericho, they didn't earn that. The Israelites that were bitten by the fiery serpents, they didn't earn a solution to the fiery bites, to the venom in their, in their blood. They didn't earn it by doing that. And we can't earn salvation when we do, no matter what God said to do, if it was the pinky that I talked about, if it's climbing the mountain seven times over the course of three years, it doesn't matter what God said, no matter what, we can't earn it. Nobody teaches we can earn it. We just teach what God said about salvation. For any who will believe and any who is immersed, it's the grace of God that we unlock by our be obedient faith. God has shown His grace unto all. That's Titus 2.11. Revealing the love on the cross, John 3.16. The faith that saves, it must <laughs> obey. And being made perfect, He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey Him. Hebrews 5.9. And conversely, 2 Thessalonians 1.8. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel. We're going to have to obey the gospel. We're going to have to have enough faith to go down into the water. Because Jesus said so. For the reason Jesus said the remission of sins, Acts 2.38. The washing of sins, Acts 22.16. For being added to the church that Jesus purchased with His own blood, Acts 20.28 20, and Acts 2.47. The grace must be unlocked by faith. You're going to have to do something if you want the blood of Jesus Christ. Faith is not belief. Faith is not mental assent. Faith is belief coupled with and evidenced by obe obedience. The grace must be unlocked by faith, your faith. In the words of Jesus Christ, that will judge us, John 12, 48. All right, we took it apart. We know the scriptures that support all these lyrics. You know this is the doctrine of Christ now. You were more noble like those Berean Jews. You tested me like I encourage you to do. You know this is the doctrine of Christ. We sang it. You taught me about biblical accounts of faith, and now we're going to do it again. <clears throat> Israel told by God that they had been given city of Jericho, the city of Jericho. It was the grace of God that they unlocked by faith, because they circled around the city six days.
church. Going to have to obey. If you want God to know that you have faith, you're going to have to obey. That doesn't just apply to the, His plan of salvation. His terms for salvation for the blood of Jesus is credited to your account. This is a lifetime. It's a lifetime commitment. Serving God through faith, walking in faith, walking in the light, repenting, confessing. God, I failed again. Please help me to get back up. God, please help me to look for those outs that you've given us, that you've given me. I did it again. I'm sorry. I don't want to do it again. Please help me, Father, to never do it again. Keep praying for that. Have faith in His promises. He's here for you. He wants you to win. Win the race. He wants you to keep fighting the good fight of faith. He wants to tell you, enter in. Well done, child. Enter the glory He's prepared for you. I want you to hear it. I love you and I want you to go to heaven. Sometimes my work's hard. It is hard. Sometimes I get to moments like this and, and I am moved because I think about Judgment Day. And when I hear the words of God as Jesus goes between us, am I covered by the blood of Jesus? Well, I met His terms for salvation. And when I think about you, I want you to hear well done. I want you to be prepared. I want you to keep fighting the good fight of faith. I think I said previously in the week that I don't want to go to Judgment Day alone. I want to have people behind me that said, Paul, I obeyed the gospel and then I fell away and you came and told me that I need to come to myself like Naaman. And you said to me, Paul, Paul, you said to me, I can get up and I can do it. I want people behind me saying, Paul, I, I was told that I can invite Jesus into my heart. And you told me that wasn't in the Bible. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. I want y'all to hear the same thing, okay? I want you to have people behind you thanking you for helping them prepare for Judgment Day. I want to have revived you this week. I want you to be fired up. God's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our service, a lifetime of service, of our focus, for Him to be the primary reason we make decisions in this life. He's worth it. Heaven will be worth it. Jesus is worth it. He loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you, but not as much as Jesus. Jesus loved you enough to lay down His life for you. Isn't it worth living your life for Him all the way? Just give it over to Him. Be His servant. I want you to be fired up, church. It's worth it. It will be worth it. And when you hear, well done, enter in, it will all have been worth it, no matter how hard it is. I do love you, and I want you to go to heaven. If you haven't obeyed the gospel, now, now is the time. Right now. Don't let me keep pacing back and forth, telling you to, to do what God said for you to do. Just... Cut me off and say, let's go to the water. Or, pray now, I I've been living wrong. Pray that God would forgive me. If you need to obey the gospel, now's the time. Our, our time has just about come to a close. I really want you to serve God to the best of your abilities with all the tools and the talents He has placed in your charge because He has equipped you. He has. If you haven't obeyed the gospel, hear the good news about Jesus that He is the Son of God, that He lived a sinless life. They crucified Him on a Roman cross and He went willingly. He stayed there for three days and then was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. And because He never sinned, that's why His blood is the only suitable sacrifice that can forgive you of your sins. Once you believe that, you need to confess that before people. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Romans 10, 9 and 10, just like the Ethiopian did in Acts chapter 8. Change your mind. I'm not going to live for self. I'm going to live for God. That's repentance, a change of mind that results in a change of behavior. Once you do that, you head to the water and you have someone immerse you. It's simple. It doesn't make sense. Just like looking at a brazen serpent doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that the blood of Jesus will be credited to your account when you hit the water and go under the water and you're raised to walk as a new creature, a Christian. It doesn't make sense. But God says it works. 
have enough faith to take him up on that simple offer for salvation. If you need to make things right with God because you haven't been walking like you ought to, now's the time. If it's private, do it privately. If it's public, do it publicly. And if you have any other kind of need, prayers for anything, that's what the church does because we are blood-bought family. Thank you so much for your time. It's, it's been a blessing to be here beyond my ability to express it. Love all of you. Any kind of need, obey the gospel, repent, or ask for prayers for anything, make it known right now while we stand and sing. Another good lesson. Thank you, Paul. Uh, we've had six good lessons now. Uh, <clears throat> we've re really en enjoyed uh, the fun and fellowship we've had this week with uh, Paul, and then uh, also hearing his lessons. And uh, we will take those and, and be better examples of uh, Jesus in our everyday lives. I know. Uh, who is to close us in prayer? Okay, Dwayne. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that you've had to be together to study another portion of your word, to be able to know that we are doing the right things by faith, that we know what needs to be done, that we have done it. Father, we pray that you will always be with us because we need you desperately. Father, 
ask that you be with Paul as he uh, departs to go home tomorrow. Keep him safe so that he can go back to his family. We ask that you will, as always, Father, be with our armed forces, particularly those that are in harm's way. Be with our brethren that are in the Ukraine so that they might be safe, that people in that area might come to their senses so that there might be peace again. Please forgive us of our sins as we depart. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs> Oh, my God.